Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. It's so good to see all your faces. And um, as we begin this wonderful exploration um, and continue our time together for the new year, looking at our self-study lessons, I'm going to share my screen so we can take that prescription for spiritual alignment together. And here we go. Let's see if I can get it going here. Okay, wonderful. I invite you to just sit back and, and open yourselves to these words for our new year. We take them for today and we take them for every day of 2022 and beyond. We are aligned with the presence of God within. We are protected by God's love, wisdom, knowledge, and grace. The God consciousness within helps us discover more about who we are. Thank you, God, for the gift of spiritual intuition. Thank you, God, for aligning our conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds. And what a great way to start this year together. So it is. So today, what a wonderful topic for our start of the new year, strengthening our intuition. Um, this is based on the Center for Enlightenment self-study lesson on intuition and there's going to be a link to that in your chat area um, on zoom and also it will go out with our recordings um, as well tomorrow tomorrow morning so um, i called this lesson for today strengthening your intuition because it's not really an introduction to your intuition because most of you if you are even remotely interested in the teachings of center for enlightenment you have some intuition going on to start off with that drew you to wanting to know more in the way that um, is presented in um, through Center for Enlightenment, through Jane Elizabeth Hart. So welcome, you intuitive people, you. We are going to talk about other things around intuition um, today. So here we go. So what is intuition? Intuition is a higher faculty of the mind, and it opens you up to an entirely new world of learning, a new language, a new um, way of looking at the world. When we talk about moving from the third dimension to the fourth dimension, it's our intuition that intuits that fourth dimensional understanding as we go. I invite you to look over this self-study lesson on intuition also because it's beautiful. It's a wonderful start to finish if you just read through it you can go back and look at the videos later the videos are amazing but if you just read through the the content of this lesson it's it's almost like this wave of understanding and this wave of support will move through you it's, it's a wonderful lesson and so i'm taking all of this information today from um, from this self-study lesson i appreciate how jane elizabeth talks to us about the intellect and you can find this in your spiritual power tools book too on the i think it's chapter two from intellect to intuition if you can read through that as well for some backup support um, on this lesson on intuition the intellect is the intelligence of the human self and it has been very important we've been developing our intellect throughout our soul's history Every lifetime, we gained a little bit of understanding and knowledge on a little bit of intelligence um, as we move from one lifetime to the next, and it's been important in the third dimension. The intuitive faculty is the intelligence of the soul, and that is important as we are moving into our fourth dimensional understanding, into our higher self, into understanding how to move out of our humanness and more into our spiritual beingness. 
the God computer is a graphic that is in the spiritual power tools. And I wanted to go over that a little bit today because it is very much about what's happening when we meditate, what's happening um, with our intuition. So Jane, many years ago, worked selling computers for a short time. One of her um, jobs that she had was going from dentist office to dentist office selling um, computers. And at the time, it was a whole different ball game than buying a laptop or iPad to like it is today. There was a designated mainframe computer that an office had to have. And then individual computers were set up for the individual people working with them. So when Jane Elizabeth first described this graphic, she was talking about the mainframe and that God is that main computer, that mainframe computer that has all the information that the individual computers need to do their work. So we can think of it today as the infinite internet, right? Where we sit down and we Google something within, we tap into that, that infinite intelligence of the universe and we can find our answer. It's the same thing. And meditation is that direct line to, it's our internet connection. It's our divine internet connection. It's our access to that main computer. And the intuition is what helps us interpret the information that comes through. Jane Elizabeth talks about our intuition as another arm. We have another arm that is part of us. Our intuition is part of who we are. And the more we tap into it, the stronger that arm gets. And it can be helping us. So we have three arms doing our everyday work instead of just two. It's a wonderful um, faculty that we all have access to. All right. So we, again, we have been developing our intellect through many lifetimes. And now, today, we're more aware of the limitations of the intellect. We're more aware of like, okay, I've been working on this thing inside of me, this aspect of myself for a long time, and it's still there, and I'm still wrestling with it. And, you know, I still don't understand things. And I, I don't understand the world. I don't understand other people. I think I do, and I kind of do but I'm understanding the limitations of that. And we start to wonder what's beyond the repetitive third dimension of like, oh my gosh, is this all there is? What's that more? And that's our intuitive sense pushing us, guiding us. Our intellect has reached its, its capacity for understanding who we are, understanding the world. And our intuition is starting to come to the surface more. Our intellect can only take us a limited distance along the path of enlightenment. And the intuition must be strengthened in order to continue the process because the intellect is the intelligence of our human self and the intuition is the intelligence of our soul. So developing our intuition is the next step in consciousness. It's the next step in becoming more of our higher self. Remember our talks on reincarnation, on karma, on past lifetimes. We've been around for a long time and our intellect has been developing through each of these lifetimes that we've been through, for, through each lifetime, every lifetime we've been through. Our intellect gets a little better, a little better, a little better. And in the vi one of the videos on this self-study lesson, Jane says, you know, the intellect, it can have some good ideas because it's been around for a long time. It's been practicing. But the intellect doesn't have the capacity to manage all the information and possibilities for us moving forward or to manage all the illusions and emotions of the subconscious mind or the information beyond that. You know, we have a lot of stored issues, stored emotion in that subconscious mind and the intellect just gets overwhelmed when that stuff comes up. We need our intuition to help sort through it, to help discern, to help understand what's coming up, why is it coming up, and what do I need to do about it? And that's one of the reasons why intuition 
intuition is important. It also is what helps us learn how to unravel the karma, uncover our true self. The intellect only knows how to do the same old thing, but just maybe a little better, maybe, <laughs> than last time we did it. You know, in one of my lifetimes, which um, I'll talk about more in a little bit, but um, in my concubine lifetime, where my feet were bound when I was a young child. And uh, when that lifetime came up, I remember feeling so horrified that my parents were doing that to me as a child, um, even though it was the thing to do in that century. But when my concubine grew up and had her own child, she decided, I'm not going to do that to my little girl. I think it's horrific. It's barbaric. It's horrible. And so she did it. And it was the worst thing she could have decided <laughs> at all because what happened is it rendered that child, the only thing that she could do in the world was be a servant or a street rat or, you know, she wasn't able to be married. She wasn't able to move up in the world. So, it, so my concubine's big idea of, hey, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to do the right thing was maybe we can look back on it and say, wait, good, good for you, go against the grain. <laughs> but at the time, it was a really poor decision given the context of that lifetime and the, that time period in history. It was, a, it was a terrible decision. But my goodness, before that, I had had lifetimes where I was so barbaric as a rule that by the time I reached my concubine consciousness, I had grown that enough in my intellect that said, that part of me said, you know, or part of that concubine, I want to say, said, you know, that's not a nice thing to do. I'm not going to do that. But that intellect wasn't developed enough to say, okay, what's in the best interest of the soul that is my child? Fortunately, in this lifetime, I was, <laughs> I had Jane Elizabeth backing me up, and I had more intuition developed, more intellect developed, intellect enough to know that my intellect doesn't know everything, and able to say, okay, these, these souls that came into this world are, as my children are souls in evolution, just like I am, and it's my job to support their souls in evolution according to what their souls need to the best of my ability, not according to what Lynn might think would be right for them. That's a whole process in and of itself, letting go of what the intellect holds on to and opening to what our intuition is saying. And that intuition helps us discern that intellect that's trying to do the right thing but doesn't quite know how to do it and it helps discern our true intuitive guidance. And Jane Elizabeth says, you know, our intuition helps us not get stuck in the mire and the muck of the third dimension of, oh my gosh, the emotions and the, the illusions and the, the misconceptions that we hold that are understandable at, from a human perspective. But if we're able to look back from that spiritual perspective, there's a whole other system happening at the same time. And if we cooperate with that wider system, then we can support things working out, situations working out better than our intellect could ever possibly figure out on its own. So what happens when we move out of the intellect into intuition? Don't we still need our intellect? Well, we still use our minds, but we're using them in a whole new way. When the intuitive mind takes charge, it helps us have that deeper understanding, that wider perspective of, of our life circumstances, of the souls who are in our lives and what they're there for, why they're behaving the way they're behaving, why we're behaving the way we're behaving, and how to navigate through all of those parts and pieces. Our intuition grants us a wider vision that's available than what's available through the small peephole of the intellect. So here's the peephole. Some of you might recognize this image. They're looking through a 
maybe a telescope at some waves, but we don't know if those are waves at a wave pool, if we're just looking through that peephole. We don't know if it's a lake or if it's an ocean or just what that is. Where, where are we on? Are we on a beach? Are we, I mean, maybe obviously we're on a beach or on cement on the side of that wave pool, but we're just looking at it and that's all we know. So we can make some decisions. We can say, you know, I might need my swimming suit, but we don't know if it's too deep. We don't know what's happening there. So all we can do is use our limited sense of vision of sight to look through and see, determine what we need. But as we transition from our intellect to intuition, when we step back and say, okay, this is what I see with my in intellect, but if I tune in to my intuition and I let go of wanting to just hurry up and jump in the water <laughs> or hurry up and stay out of the water, depending on your preference, then as we let go of those attachments either way, then we can say, okay, what's, what am I supposed to do here? And we tap into that mainframe computer. We tap into that infinite internet and gain a different perspective. Maybe we get a new answer. Maybe we say, okay, that, that water, we find out that water is not safe to jump in. I don't know why. I don't have to know why. But if my intuition says that water is not safe to jump in, you know, it's got sharks swimming around in there that haven't surfaced yet, so you can't see them. I just might follow my intuition and stay out of the water. Even if I can't see the sharks, I'm trusting that intuitive guidance in me because my intuition can see more than my senses. So important to trust that. But we are attached to our minds. We are attached to our intellect because we've been working very, very hard for many lifetimes to develop that intellect. And we've identified lifetime after lifetime with our mind, with our perspective, with our intellect, how we have um, made decisions, what our desires are, all of that. Remember, those are strong, strong pulls from one, life to, to one lifetime to the next. And for good reason, you know, that has helped, helped us keep going. That has helped us learn and grow and, and develop and evolve into the place where we are today, where we're saying, okay, so now what? You know, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and here I am, I'm still here. And if my work is to unravel the false beliefs and unresolved issues that are trapped in my subconscious mind, how do I do that? How can I do that? If my little self at the top of this iceberg is Lynn today, but Lynn is made up of the experiences and issues and emotions, desires and anger and all sorts of other stuff from all these other lifetimes that I've lived, how is the intellect of Lynn going to understand how to work with all of that information? She's not. She is certainly not going to. Not from the intellect, you know, because I would have this, my concubine in the red dress coming up and telling me how to raise my children. I would have Anna, who is over here on the post about to be burned at the stake saying, oh, life is so not fair. Oh, because she chose a life of torment start to finish because she had some stuff she wanted to pay off, but she forgot, but she paid it off well, but she would be making my decisions for me. Or my Inca woman who is, was convinced that she was the downfall of her civilization. She wasn't, but try telling her that she uh, doesn't usually take to that pretty well on most days. So, you know, so all of these lesser consciousnesses have made up the intellect of who I am today. And you have your own iceberg of different lifetimes you've lived, different desires you've had, different unresolved issues that are there popping up. And the intellect has tries its best to, to manage those. But 
only through our intuition, only through the guidance of that spiritual support we have around us. Jane Elizabeth calls them out-of-body teachers. I always shorten that in my as I'm journaling and asking questions. To I shorten that to OBT, my out-of-body teacher. Um, but we have that spiritual support as we say, okay, enough is enough. I don't know what to do. How do I unravel this? Why am I reacting like this? Where is that coming from? What can I do about it? You know, our intuition is the only way to navigate through this when, because our intuition isn't, hmm, as we do, let me put it this way, as we develop our intuition, we are less and less over time influenced by those old consciousnesses that we've been because we start to understand them. We forgive them. We release that stored energy around the desires, around the emotions from those past lives. So, and then that helps us be more free to see the bigger picture of what's happening today. Intuition is the only way out of the box. So here we are. We are in a box. The box is the third dimension. The box is karma. The box is the opposites of the third dimension. The box is our limited intellect. So we are in the box and we are trying to figure out how to get out of the box. The intellect is trying to figure out how to get out of the box. So the intellect looks around and says, well, there's four walls, there's a ceiling, there's a, a floor, there are no windows, there are no doors, but maybe, maybe if, if I, maybe if I try really hard, maybe if I build a ladder, I can get out of this box. And so the intellect builds a ladder and man, it's a great ladder, wonderful skills used to, to build that ladder, but there's no ceiling opening for the intellect. The intuition is both in the box and outside of the box with all of the information we need for getting out of the box. The intellect gets frustrated and confused and angry when it tries its ideas and it's still in the box. And it thinks, finally, ah, oh, I want to get out of this box. I'm going to do it. I'm so excited about getting out of this box. And then it tries and it tries and it tries. And all it can do is just pull up information of what it has experienced before and try to do it a little bit better. Well, that time didn't work. So let me try this. Let me try it a new way. And maybe it gets a little better. Maybe at least the intellect can be proud that it had a good idea, even if it didn't work. But that is not the way out of the box. Our spiritual freedom is experiential, not intellectual. It's experiential. It's an experience of consciousness. It's an experience of the heart, not an intellectual understanding, although understanding comes along with our growth. When we try to figure something out with the intellect, we get very confused with um, Jane. We used to call it scrambling the brain. It's like, oh my gosh, I've been back and forth on one side of this topic, on another side of the topic for five hours today, trying to figure this out. And my brain feels scrambled. It just feels like, oh my gosh, I feel confused. I feel like, you know, nothing is going to help. And that was always the best moment because that's when we would stop trying to figure it out and say, okay, I give up. I surrender. Jane would say, just wave your white flag of surrender and say, I surrender. I don't know how to do this. But my intuition, my observer self, my out-of-body teacher, my in-body teacher knows how to help me with this because they've gone there before. They've done this before. They know how to get out of the box. They're out of the box. I need help getting out of the box. And I have to stop trying to do it with my intellect because the intellect does not have access to the information, only the intuition, only that experience through 
the heart has that ability to find out what that information is. So our humanness, our intellect, our humanness is attached to the box because we've partially built this box. We have been trying to get out of it for many lifetimes. We have decorated it. <laughs> we, have, we have hung out in it. We have made peace with it in some ways, like, oh, this is, this is what it is. Okay, I'm just going to be satisfied in my box because I don't know how to get out of it, which is fine, too. That's, a, you know, how do, we, how do we move forward? You know, we make peace with what we got, and then the next step comes in to move us out of the box. And our intuition is what helps us learn how to do that. It's a very simple concept, but very challenging to do. And for the new year, we accept that challenge, don't we? And we've been accepting it, and we will accept it today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, and all the years to come. All the years we need to move out of this box. But as we go, the intuition encourages us. The knowledge that we receive encourages us, hey, so now here's your choice. Here's some information. You can raise your children, for example. You can raise your children with the idea that you are going to make them turn out a certain way. Or you can listen to what their souls need. Take a step back, listen to what their souls need, and support them in what's the highest and best interest of their souls. And that's a whole different measuring stick, right? Then, well, what are my parents going to think? What are the neighbors going to think? What is the school going to think? You know, what do I want for my children? How do I want them to turn out? Oh, blech. <laughs> that doesn't even feel good to say that. You know, I want to be there. And, and as a mother, I wanted to be there for those souls to the best of my ability so that they could be the brightest expression of their souls that they could possibly be. And that had nothing to do with me. That had to do with understanding and tuning into what their needs are. And every situation is like that. A work situation of, you know, oh, I want to be the best yada, yada, yada in the office versus, hey, how do I serve better? How do I lift the energy in the office? How do I, how do I serve my clients in the best way possible a whole different whole different perspective whole different ball game whole different answers this is about listening to your heart when we stop and listen to the intuition when we listen with our hearts we can feel and experience ourselves already outside of the box from that expanded intuitive experience which we call consciousness we're awakening our consciousness, expanding our consciousness, the box disappears and we're free. I made a note here to remind myself to talk about this because this came to me as I, in my meditation as I was working with this material. And when I was a kid, I would have these dreams over and over and over and over again. I cannot tell you how many times that I had these dreams throughout growing up. And there were dreams in which I would fly. I'd be able to fly to school, which wasn't, you know, it was probably about a 10-minute walk. But um, I would fly to school and, you know, kind of the Superman fly where I would just be able to jump off the roof of my house and fly over the field to the school without even thinking about it, without having to drive. There, was a, there were a few dreams, you know, two or three maybe, where I had a contraption that was helping me fly. But here's the catch. The catch in the dream was always, every single time, always. If I thought about flying, if I questioned it, if I doubted it, if I wanted to understand how am I doing this, I would land on the ground and I would not be able to jump up again. And what a lesson. I had no idea that that was a lesson in moving from the third dimension to the fourth dimension. If I try to do it with my mind, it doesn't work. I had to let go. I don't know how this is happening, but I just 
I trust and I believe, and then I suddenly find myself lifting off the ground again and moving forward. Every single time it was that dream and it's such a beautiful metaphor for our process. When we're, our intellect has its purpose, it serves its purpose, but when we need information that is going to work us out of a situation, our intuition is the way to go because it knows more and we can trust it. We can trust it. Experiencing our higher self is done through our intuitive sense, not through an intellectual understanding of this material, of reincarnation, of karma. It's about, okay, that information is helpful, yes, but the practical application comes through our experience of it. So how do we develop our intuition? Well, meditation, 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 meditate, meditate, meditate. You will hear James saying over and over again in, in videos and uh, classes and, and her, some of her writings. Meditate, meditate, meditate is about intuition and developing the intuition. It's the, it strengthens our connection to our divine internet, to that infinite internet. And it's vital on this journey. If we're not meditating, we will gather up a bunch of wonderful intellectual information on soul evolution and, and enlightenment, but it, it isn't going to get us anywhere. We'll take that information into our next lifetime and maybe, maybe then we'll be ready to put it into practice. But our experience of meditation opens us up and lifts our consciousness to be able to receive what, that intuitive guidance, to receive what we need to receive in order to handle whatever is in front of us to handle. Our observer self, using our observer self every day to watch our thinking throughout the day. What am I thinking about? What, am, what is my brain obsessing about? What is my intellect obsessing about? What how am I talking to myself? What are some of the things that I'm saying to myself over and over again? Journaling is a wonderful way to develop intuition. You know, let me put some of these thoughts down on paper so that I can see what pattern is emerging so that I can understand more of what's coming up from my subconscious to, that's trying to help me be aware of so that I can unravel it and let it go. In the video on the self-study lesson, Jane Elizabeth says, acknowledge your out-of-body teacher and remember that you're supported. You have support helping you. You have our Sunday courses. You have our Thursday Q&A support group. You have access to the Center for Enlightenment website where if you have a question that has to do with your spiritual understanding, you can type that topic in the search bar and something will show up that will support you. You have your spiritual power tools book that hopefully still every morning you are taking this book in your hands and saying, okay, what do I need to know for my day? What do I need to know for my day? What do I need to focus on? What do I need to, how, how do I support my soul today? And then you open it up to a random page and there's your answer. And maybe you don't know why you got that page. There are some days, many days, when I would open up my spiritual power tools book or some other spiritual book I was using for the same purposes and say, oh, well, that's kind of a letdown. I don't understand why I got that again. Or, you know, that's a fifth time this week I've gotten that message. I'm really bored with it now. But there's a reason. There's a reason it's coming up. There's a reason that I'm pulling on the same message five out of seven days of the week, you know, and, and as we work with that, we are spoken to, we are guided. And Jane Elizabeth said, she said this to me individually, and I know she said it in classes, you are never alone, even when you think you are. We are never alone, even when we think we are. So when we think we're hiding, or we think we're not doing so well, 
we're supported and all we have to do is tap into that intuition because remember moving into our higher self moving into the fourth dimension is voluntary we have to want to do it we have to do our part in reaching out and saying yes i want the support that's there available to me i want it i need it i demand it some days <laughs> some days we have to have that strong of a desire of i demand help i demand support i'm doing my part and i just keep getting stuck in something that's going on in my head help me help me it's there that support is there for us in so many ways and it's our job to pay attention to those signs that are coming in maybe it's through the still small voice or a sense we just get a sense about something and we trust it through our books our reading through dreams signs both literal signs that we might drive by or the fi figurative signs something we see on a tv show that all of a sudden is speaking to us you know i love in my work as a therapist i love love might be the wrong word <laughs> but i can laugh about it when i will say something to somebody and then even as as it's coming out of my mouth i will be very aware that i will be eating those words by the end of the day because they are meant for me <laughs> i'm saying them once for one person and once for myself um, so all of these ways our intuition is is moving through us that spiritual support that we have that we are immersed in comes forth um, and we just have to pay attention to it and we just have to trust that that we're seeing what we're seeing when we become aware of those messages many times your intuition will just flow through you in the moment and you'll know the exact thing to say or do that will be in the best interest of all and sometimes we have no idea what to do but then we can be aware that we have no idea what to do and say, okay, I'm open. I'm open here. And I remember Jane Elizabeth saying one time too, when she was talking to us about our intellect and, you know, how much we love the intellect and love figuring things out and love being so darn smart. And she said to us, if I thought through everything I should say to my students, I would go crazy. I'm just in the now and I know what each person needs. It's that intuitive flow, that intuitive um, consciousness that gives us our answers. You know, think of how, just think right now of a situation that has happened this week. I'm sure there has been one because there always is where you have spent minutes, hours, days, trying to figure something out what is this what is going on i can't believe this oh my gosh this person was doing this or that or the other thing i have no idea what to do i'm just not i'm gonna unfriend them on facebook i'm going to blah 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 yeah i don't know what to do with them or here's the situation well should i do this should i do that should i should i get a car what kind of car should i get well there's you know the you know there's not really many options out there because of all the mechanical production blah 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 things that have been happening over the last couple of years and um you know what am i going to do well maybe i should lease maybe and we just think and think and think and think and think instead of saying okay here's what i need i need a car here's what i need i need to know what i need to do about this person in my life how do i do that what do i do and we sit back and we say okay i don't know i don't know but I know I can tap into that infinite wisdom of the universe and be supported here. So think right now of that situation that has been rolling around in your mind back and forth. Just let it go. Step back from it and say, I don't know what to do. But my intuitive self does my higher self that is beautifully supported by, by my out-of-body teachers, call them angels, whatever you want to call them. A 
and I will get an answer. Maybe I have to work staying out of my head about it, staying out of my intellect, staying out of the box. I'm just going to let the problem be in the box and I'm going to step back beyond the box and just wait for my answer. And then let it go. And it's going to come up. It's going to come up in your mind. Your mind's going to start chewing on it again. And say, nope, I'm not doing that. Nope, back in the box. Thank you, God, for my answer here. But I won't. I will say, I'll do my part. I'll stay out of my mind about it. I'll stay out of my head about it. Thank you for my answer. I know it's coming forth. I know my answer is coming forth. And over and over again, that's what we do because there's always a situation to be guided on, right? There's always a situation. There's never a time. There's never a time to put down our intuition. There's never a time to do that because everything is important. Everything you do is spiritual. There's always reason to be in the flow of that intuitive guidance. And we have to trust it. We have to trust it. The more we trust our intuition, the better it serves us. We step into more and more that flow of that intuitive information, that intuitive equipment that we have. Jane calls it equipment. It's an extra arm. It's a piece of equipment that belongs to us. One of my favorite meditations is picturing my heart in the center of a satellite dish, like this one in the picture, except I'm right in the center of it. And not even me, not my head, not my, not even my conscious awareness, but my intuitive heart is right in the center. And I, I feel that satellite dish cradling my heart and I just sit and I listen. And I see my thoughts go by and they just go by one by one and I just let them. But my attention is just resting in the middle of that satellite dish, knowing that I'm picking things up. Something's getting downloaded. I am absorbing all the information I need for my week, for my journey for the situations at hand, for the situations I don't even know are coming yet. Every day I sit and I am a receiver, a satellite, giant satellite receiver. My family and I years ago went to see the very large array in Socorro, New Mexico, and there are many of these giant, giant, I'm talking giant, <laughs> satellite dishes, and the, the vastness of those dishes left an impression <laughs> on me, quite a big impression. So, and, and to see how even as big as they were, as each one of these, there are dozens of these giant satellite dishes all around this big area. And even for as big as those were, because we were just tiny little specks next to them, but these, even as big as those satellite dishes were, they were open to something even bigger than they were. So picturing that your heart in the middle of that satellite dish is not only moving beyond your personal self, opening to your intuition, but it's that intuition that's opening to something infinitely beyond that. Feeling that openness, that receptivity, 
And sometimes I would even visualize every cell in my body as its own satellite dish. So my whole heart and body and surroundings were in receptive mode. Practicing that receptivity helps hone that intuition. It helps remind you that that intuition is more important than anything. So it's a process. We have to be gentle with ourselves as we're learning. In the spiritual power tool of, of guidance, we continue learning about developing that intuitive guidance ability, still the mind. That's why I like to have visuals like satellite dish in my heart at the center of a satellite dish. When we're not resisting our thoughts, they're going to come and go, but we just let them pass through. And we're clearing the space in our heart. We're clearing that satellite dish so that it's open and receptive. One of the challenges of developing our intuition is releasing our old beliefs around things, releasing our preconceived notions, ideas, intellectual solutions that that come up and emotional investment that we have in the outcome of whatever we're working on receiving guidance for. You know, if, if, if I'm trying to get a new car and I have an attachment to one type of car, but my intuition is telling me, yeah, but what you really need, you want a convertible, but you, what you really need is something to carry more people or carry your kayaks or carry your bicycle, you know, and a, and a, a convertible isn't going to do it. You can go with a convertible, but is that going to suit your needs? But we have to release our attachments one way or the other. And our, in our spiritual power tools book, it tells us listening is difficult when we desire a certain response. It's hard to get the accurate information if we already think we know the answer. So part of our work in developing that intuition is releasing our attachments to outcomes, which we've talked about many times before, because we don't know what the right outcome is. And we've talked about guidance coming from many different sources, a song on the radio, an idea in a book or a movie, a casual comment of a friend, something comes out of our own mouths that we say, oh, wait, that's my answer too or a billboard, and we need to be patient as we are working with these answers too, because we want to just have the answer and be able to move on, but that's not what life is about. It's when we reach this point where we're interested in our intuition, life is not about hurrying up and getting the answer and moving on anymore. We, we want it to be. <laughs> We went, okay, I've got the answer, check it off my list, and let's keep going. But that's not what it's about because we are unfolding. We are unraveling our karma, which takes presence and patience, and we are unfolding to our higher self, which takes presence and patience. So it's important for us to accept the answer we receive because just because it may not makes sense to our intellect in the moment doesn't mean it's not the right answer. Our intuition is trying to show us more, trying to help us move beyond something that we may understand better once we're on the other side of it. There are so many instances where I had to take a step and go do something 
and I didn't know why, and I struggled with it. You know, why, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to, you know, detach from my children? I, I know how to do this. I, I've, <laughs> I've been a mom many lifetimes before. I know how to do this, but I didn't. I know how to support my clients. My intellect doesn't. I know how to fill in the blank. But if our answer that's coming in is different than what we're expecting, we're not to judge or analyze it. We just accept it and say, okay, this, this is what you told me. This is what I will do. I am on board with my intuition, my intuitive guidance, no matter what. And these are also in the Spiritual Power Tools book. We can test our guidance, especially when it's about something that we have a lot of emotion around. And it's hard to discern whether the answer is from the intuition or from desire, ego desires or fears. I think that's the biggest question um, that comes up when we're talking about intuition, when we're talking about the higher self. It's like, how do we know? How do we know that what my higher self is saying to me and what my ego is saying to me because it really wants a certain outcome. And in one of the videos, um, and I can't recall off the top of my head if it's the one in the self-study lesson or there are a couple of others that I listen to that will be part of your um, reflections and recording that comes out via email tomorrow. Um, but... Jane, when Jane said, you know, I could always tell when my students were attached to their outcome because their guidance would tell them one thing and they would say, yeah, but, but why is it that and why isn't it the other thing? It's like, ah, oh, you're attached. You're attached to the outcome. And you're going to struggle with this until you detach from the outcome and listen to your intuition. So one of, here's some four questions that talk about why, how do we know? How do we know? Well, is it good for all concerned? Is the guidance that you received good for all concerned? It may not, not if all concerned will like it. That's a different question that is not on this list. But is it good for all concerned? Is it moral? Is it going to hurt anyone? Does it demonstrate unconditional love? And unconditional love comes from loving detachment. Detachment from the outcomes. Detachment from our own unresolved issues that we're working to resolve. That's why we're doing this process. And release your attachment to the outcome. And say, okay, this is the guidance I received. I'm going to test it out. And trust it. And see what happens. So as we started this lesson today, I was telling one of, one of our people, I said, this is either going to be a two-week lesson or a one-week lesson, depending on how fast we go. So it looks like it's going to be a two-week lesson. So I'm going to just pause here and come back to you. Oops, no, that's not what I meant to do. There we go. Let's just have... A minute or two of putting ourselves in that receptive space, open to our intuition. And if you'd like to, come up with an image where your heart is a receptive piece of equipment. There's a satellite dish. Another visualization I like to use is I just stick two ears on either side of my heart. And I just put myself in a listening space. And when my mind wanders, I just bring it back to that receptive heart.
that infinite wisdom knows everything about our year. It knows everything about our week. It knows everything about our day. And as we listen, trust, and act upon our intuitive guidance throughout the day, every day, we're keeping current with our year. We're keeping current with our potential for movement and expansion. We grab up every opportunity to let go, to forgive, to change directions based on guidance. That inner receptivity makes us malleable, teachable, movable. And we thank the intellect for all that it has done for us. And we say, okay, I'm ready for the intelligence of my soul. Take a deep breath right through your heart, through that receptive heart. And ask every moment of every day, what do I need to do here? What do I need to do in this situation? Ask in the little things, which is a slide we didn't get to today, but ask in the little things. What grocery store should I go to? What shirt should I wear? Whatever. And practice with those little things because that is how we develop and learn how to trust our intuition in the bigger things, trusting our hearts. And I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday at our Q&A support session where we get to check in about our intuition this week and how we're using it, how it's been difficult, how it's been wonderful, all of it, because we're all on the same page, working together, supporting each other. I hope to see you then, and if you'd like to donate to Center for Enlightenment, which is supported by your love, your presence, your, your gifts, there's a link to that in the chat room as well. And Happy New Year, Happy New Opening of Your Intuition, and we will continue with this next week. Much love to you all. Bye-bye.